Hey, what's up everybody? Trophonet here and welcome back to Gwent Edge. In this show we talk about specific Gwent cards or interesting decks to play around with. CD Projekt Red recently added 5 new leaders to the game and now that we've had some time to try them out, we can take a closer look at each of them and how to use them effectively. We continue this series with Queen Meave, the new Northern Realms faction leader. Important note first, all five of the new leaders are characters from Thronebreaker, Gwent's single player campaign, but this entire video is however spoiler free, so we will not be talking about any story details from Thronebreaker, so you're safe on that front. If you're interested in Thronebreaker, you can check out my playthrough right here, so go and take a look at that. Everyone still here? Great, here we go. Let's start with Meave's ability. Meave is the direct opposite of Krach on Crate, meaning she can boost an ally by one every two turns. At first I felt like this ability was really lackluster, boosting is a lot less useful than damaging. With damage you can take out potentially dangerous units or keep them damaged to get an advantage with Bloodthirst abilities, a concept we discussed last week. Boosting however can be negated by both resets and damage and only serves to increase the survivability of your units because there are very little units that actually react to boosts, especially in the Northern Realms faction, of which Meave is a leader. So not off to a good start, but after experimenting with her for a bit, I actually quite like her. Let me explain why. As we just stated, boosts and by extension Meave's ability increase the survivability of your units. So if you combine her with units that are fragile but have powerful abilities, so-called glass cannons, we have a dangerous cocktail. Dangerous for your opponent, that is. In Gwent lingo, we often talk about engine cards, or active cards as I like to call them. These are cards that have recurring abilities, either triggering every turn or able to trigger multiple times with the use of charges. Because of their reusable abilities, you want to keep these on the board as long as possible to set up long cycles that stack the longer these cards are on the board. Meave can keep your cards in shape the same way Queen Meave as a character can motivate her army to face seemingly impossible odds. I love how CD Projekt Red always manages to fit characters and their abilities so close together. To capitalize on this I try to add as many options into my deck as possible so I can react to a variety of situations. You can see my deck composition right here, but again, a lot of the engine cards can be replaced with equally useful options. Northern Realms actually has a lot of useful active cards, and I can't fit all of them in a single deck or even in a single video. Let's go over some of my favorite combinations and tactics using this deck. A lot of the cards in this deck have charges, allowing them a number of times they can use their ability. Most cards start with a set number of charges, but there are two units that actually generate charges on their own. Roach Merciless and Visogota of Corvo. Roach can seize or steal a unit from your opponent with a power equal to or lower than the number of charges he has, at which point he also loses those charges. He generates a charge at the start of each of your turns, and he also does not lock the unit you steal, as with most other Seize abilities. So Roach is incredibly powerful as long as you can keep him active on the board. Visogota can boost any unit by one and generates a charge for each card both you and your opponent play. He is pretty weak at 3 power, but if he survives, he can single-handedly win you a match, generating around 2 points every turn. Both of these cards should be your main focus to protect with Avalar making them immune to targeted attacks. Another amazing card to combine them with is Dandelion, who boosts any allied unit that receives a charge by one. For Roach, this means getting boosted by one every turn, and for Visogota, this adds two points every turn, on top of the two boosts he can do every turn. If all three of these characters are on the board, you've basically won the round, since they have such amazing synergy. To further improve this cycle, you can use either Priscilla to add a charge to either of them every turn, or the Aretuza Adept to do the same every two turns. Keep in mind that immunity also works on you, so if you've protected either of them with Avalar, you can't add charges to them manually since you've made him immune. Another great engine of war is Foltest's Pride. This catapult damages an enemy and all enemies with the same power by one. If you boost its number of charges by using Priscilla, the Aretuza Adept, 
or the Siege support, which adds two charges to a machine immediately, you can stack this and possibly demolish your opponent's board completely. I've added a few other machines to the deck to keep our Siege support useful in case we lose Voltest, right? Or you just don't draw him from your deck. Plus, they also make great targets if you have Priscilla on the board, since they all have charges. The Botchling, on the other hand, is a complete engine on his own, capable of either damaging the highest enemy or boosting the lowest ally every turn by one, and able to switch between these two states at will, even healing off any damage in the process. And to actually stay in the Stranger family, Anna Stranger is an incredibly powerful card as well. If she's boosted, she boosts her adjacent units by one at the end of each of your turns. Combine this with a Trident Infantry unit, which damages a random enemy by one every time it is boosted, or any of your other engines, and you have another solid engine loop. Meave can easily keep Anna boosted and keep the cycle going. The last few cards I want to talk about are mostly one-offs, but we need a few of those to deal with direct threats. Vess can damage a unit by 4 and give an ally zeal to allow them to fire off their order ability immediately. Nanaka can boost the unit by 1 and she has 3 charges, allowing you to distribute those boosts wherever you want. Combine it with Black Blood, which destroys the next enemy that receives a boost, and you can destroy a unit of your choosing. Our final card is Shoop's Day Off. The Vendering Gwent is finally in a Gwent Edge deck. To use him, you cannot have duplicates in your deck, but you get a veritable Swiss knife in return. He can do damage or lock enemies, boost allies, become immune or gain resilience. Shoop is amazing and is a great panic button if you need to counter something you cannot handle otherwise. And all of this under the watchful eye of Queen Meave, boosting morale where needed, keeping soldiers on their feet, shouting us to victory. Of the 10 matches I've played with this deck, 8 of them were victories in honor of our Golden Queen. The de facto example of the phrase, every little bit helps. The only real counters to this deck are decks that focus heavily on damage, so your opponent can take out your engines as they appear on the board. Uh, otherwise, you have a wide variety of options that cannot be completely countered, because you can heal off any damage you take, and you can choose to either go on the defensive or on an all-out offensive. And that's it for Queen Me. If you like Gwent, strategies, deck ideas and tournaments, Check out myesports.net, they have a lot of tools to share your decks, keep track of active and upcoming events, and they host a number of tournaments as well. The kind folks over there also share my videos, so pay them a visit and let them know Trophynet said hello. I'm really grateful for their support. Got any other tips on how to play Queen Neve? Don't hesitate to leave advice in the comment section down below. Next time we'll discuss how to use the fearsome Scoia'tael leader, Eldane. Check me out on Twitter if you want to talk, and if you enjoyed this video, why not give it a like or maybe even a sub? Any support is really appreciated. Thanks enormously for watching, and I hope to see you guys in the next episode of Gwent Edge. Goodbye!